Um, if anyone shows up late, you know, that's fine. Um, and if not, that's fine also. Um, so, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and the law. Um, this is a intro class to Enochian magic. Um, Enochian is a pretty complicated uh, system in general, and it can be very easy to get confused when trying to learn it from books and everything. So I thought I'd have a little bit of an intro class and um, try and give people a little bit of insight into how to get started and where to go once they get started. So what we're going to cover in this class, um, the basic knowledge needed to get started with the Enochian system, um, the preliminary work, things to do before an Enochian operation, you know, your, your prep work, basically, um, the Enochian calls, which are the um, central invocations that you're going to be using in order to uh, do an Enochian operation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the reformed Great ta Table of Raphael and um, how to kind of read the information that's in there. We're going to do a basic overview of the Aethers. I'm not going to go into each Aether. Um, there's going to be a list of them, but we're not going to go through all 30 of them in any kind of depth at all. Um, everything you need to know to call one of the angels from the reformed Great Table of Raphael and some additional resources for where to go to get some more information um, to help you move forward after this class if you're actually interested in doing um, some Enochian magic. So what we're not going to cover is advanced temple setup, um, including all of the Enochian tools, how to position them, etc. Um, the more advanced information in the reformed great table, including carobs, evil angels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of the systems that preceded Enochian in the Dean Kelly diaries that are not themselves Enochian. There's a lot of information over several years um, that Dean Kelly received uh, from the angels during their experiments. And some of it factors into Enochian pretty heavily. And there's a lot of information there that's just stuff that they were interested in and wanted to know about that doesn't. Um, and there's also some other magical systems that they worked with uh, in that time as well. So um, the Enochian language itself and all of the hidden complexities and double blinds in the system and all of the controversy and debate about the minutia of the Enochian system. Um, there's a lot of differing opinions. And I'm gonna go into a little bit about why there's so much controversy and debate, but I'm gonna try and stay away from the topics that um, people argue about so vehemently. So what is Enochian magic? Um, the Enochian system was received by John Dee and Edward Kelly at the end of their angelic scrying operations. Um, in the last few months, the Enochian system was received. Uh, modern Enochian magic is largely based on the systems that the Golden Dawn developed based on their interpretations of Dee and Kelly's diaries. Enochian is a system designed to contact specific angels or to visit the realms they abide in, which are called the Aethers in the system, and via scrying or visions similar to those that Kelly experienced during his experiments with Dee. Um, it's also important to note that John D and Edward Kelly did not ever use Enochian magic themselves. Um, they received the system as a part of a series of angelic experiments that they did. Um, they got all the information on how to use it, how to practice it, all the tools, everything that they need in order to perform Enochian, but they never actually used it. Um, it was later put together by the Golden Dawn into a system that was called Enochian. So why use Enochian in the first place? Um, Enochian magic is largely free from the negative stigma associated with other forms of ritual magic, um, particularly things like Goetia um, or evoking more negative uh, things or things that have a more negative kind of um, reputation. Um, like the goetic things. Um, with Enochian using angels, and angels are all lovely and fluffy creatures, as we all know. Um, Enochian magic, that, that was a little bit of sarcasm, by the way. They're not all lovely and fluffy creatures. <laughs> uh, Enochian magic can be utilized more effectively as part of working toward the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel than most other we Western systems. Um, 
in theory, according to uh, several practitioners. Um, Alistair Crowley said a little bit about that um, when he was at some point. Um, with a lot of things that Crowley said, though, he later says other things that disagree with that. So, you, you know, you kind of have to take all that with a grain of salt. Um, and as Crowley said in his confessions about Enochian, the genuineness of these keys, altogether apart from any critical observation, is guaranteed by the fact that anyone with the smallest capacity for magic finds that they work. Um, so basically, why Enochian? Because it works. You know, it's effective and it gets results. So just some quick notes on John Dee and Edward Kelly's experiments. Um, the Enochian system was one of the last things that Dee and Kelly received from the angels during their magical experiments. Um, like I said, in the last few months, they received the bulk of the Enochian information. Um, there is no evidence that either of them ever used Enochian. Um, and if they did, it probably didn't look like what the Golden Dawn later adapted it into. Um, the Golden Dawn took, uh, Mathers was really big in the Golden Dawn on basically like a unified field theory of magic, um, where he took everything that he had access to and tried to cram it into one system that worked cohesively together with everything. Um, they kind of did that with Enochian, even though Enochian is really its own thing. Um, so you have, in the Golden Dawn evocations and everything, you have hexagram rituals built in. Um, you have um, Hebrew god names, um, you have barbarous names taken from the Greek magical papyri and other things that they kind of work into Enochian, even though those things are not intrinsically part of Enochian. Um, that being said, the system they built works. Um, it's not the only way necessarily to practice Enochian, but it is effective. So um, there is a lot missing from John D. and Edward Kelly's diaries. Um, there are diaries that are just non-existent and there are pages missing, there's damaged um, pages. Um, there's a lot of things in there that just aren't there. So we don't know what we don't know. Um, and which is important with the, the final point here because John D. was a spy and a cryptographer the angels largely communicated with him through ciphers, um, double blinds, misinformations, um, encoded information. They would later go back and say that they were lying with information they gave him previously. Um, there was a lot of um, doubling back and rewriting past information. So um, because we're missing information, it's very possible that some of the information that we're working with is incorrect as it was received. Um, we just don't know. So when dealing with anyone who claims to know everything about Enochian, always kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, there's things that none of us know. Um, and we just have to kind of accept that and build what we can with what we have. All right, so about those magical tools that I was going to that I said I wasn't gonna talk about. Um, I do want to give a quick overview of the tools that John D and Edward Kelly um, had available to them. Um, they received them at different times during their angelic um, experiments. None of these tools was specifically mentioned during the phase of their experiments when the Enochian magical system was received but they already had all of these tools by then. Um, a lot of people when they're practicing Enochian magic use all of these tools um, as they were received by John D and Edward Kelly because why wouldn't you? Um, however, there's no specific mention that these are actually needed in order to perform Enochian magic. Um, so, you know, you're kind of left up to yourself to decide what, what you want to do and what you don't want to do with it. Um, there's people who have all of the tools and swear by them. There's people who just use the invocations and find that they are effective without tools at all. Um, a lot of people find that with the addition of more tools, they get more effective results. 
they get more um, a more impactful experience. Um, your mileage may vary. So I just wanted to lay these out really quick um, first, just so you had kind of an idea of what you were looking for maybe later on. Um, the Sigillum de Ameth, or the Seal of God, is a wax tablet nine inches across with a very specific um, seal on it uh, with a number of God names, um, planetary names, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Pele ring is a silver ring worn on, uh, I'm sorry, it's a gold ring, um, which is, you know, worn on the hand, obviously. Um, Holy Table of Practice is a table where uh, you can see in the picture, actually, this is a holy, an example of a holy table of practice right here um, with the Enochian script along the outside and then more in the center. Uh, the, ensi the ensigns of creation. We know what these are and what they look like. We have no idea how they were supposed to function in um, the system of magic that Dee and Kelly were working with. This is from a missing portion of the diaries. Uh, we have diagrams of what they look like. We don't know anything else about them. Um, the Tablet of Nalvage, uh, or Navalgi, or however you choose to pronounce that. Um, again, this is an item that we know what it looks like, but we don't know anything else about it. Um, it's a wax tablet. It's made of black wax. Um, it has several letters in Enochian on it, which correspond again to the Holy Table of Practice. There is no notes about how it is used in angelic operations. Um, so again, this is a tool that we we don't know. We don't know what this is. Um, a showstone, which is similar to the crystal ball in the middle here. Um, that is one of the places that the angelic visions were um, to appear to Edward Kelly during the angelic operations. A black mirror which again, same thing, um, it's a useful tool for scrying. Um, for the showstone and black mirror that Edward Kelly and John D used, the showstone was a simple quartz crystal ball. The black mirror was a little more uh, complicated. It had uh, some script along the outside. Um, so uh, my, my opinion is that probably any black mirror will do, but you know, theirs was a little bit more specific. Um, watchtower tablets, here these are, in the, the corners. Um, and those are the, those tablets correspond to the quarters on the reformed great table of Raphael, um, which are, we will get into more detail later. You don't need to have physical tablets necessarily. Um, they are handy if you are trying to reference um, the names as you go through. Um, and we'll be talking about these a little bit more as we go on. And the Holy Laman, um, there's an example of a Laman here and another one here. This is worn on the chest and the script along it is the same script that appears on the Holy Table of Practice. And the purpose of it is basically to connect you, the operator to the table where the visions are taking place, kind of closing the system um, together. But that's all I'm gonna talk about about those really. So, um, at the end, if there's any questions about any of these, I'll be happy to kind of go more in depth on them. But um, yeah, there's a whole lot of information about them and I don't want to get too bogged down with it. So I'm not going to talk too much about most of the visions that John D. Um, and Edward Kelly had. I mean, Ed Edward Kelly had the visions. Um, but this one in particular is fairly important because it forms the basis for um, most of the rest of the system of Enochian. Um, once this vision happened is really when they got into receiving Enochian magic proper. Um, everything up until this point in the years that preceded it was had to do with um, developing their own temple space or answers to questions about where lost books were hidden. Um, or things about the end of the world or the apocalypse. Um, but once this vision happened, we got we get into the receiving of Enochian magic proper. Um, so during one of their 
scrying sessions, um, Edward Kelly receives a vision of, this is a diagram of the vision, but it was four castles, um, one at each direction, north, east, south, and west. And out of each castle um, came one trumpet bearer, three uh, ensign bearers, six seniors, one king, five princes, five crosses, 16 white creatures, and then an infinite number of followers. Um, and this basically forms the central core piece of Enochian magic. Um, in Enochian, this place where um, these four castles are, um, in the center there's 16 pillars that hold up the, uh, the universe basically. Um, and all of these um, things in turn are all encoded within the Enochian system, the trumpet uh, the trumpeter, the ensign bearers, the seniors, the king, the princess, etc. Um, and then around the outside of this is where the aethers are, um, which are the 30 angelic realms, and they expand outward from, um, from the center here. Um, when you scry the aethers, you are basically starting at the outside, the outermost aether, and working your way inward toward this place, which is the center of the universe in within the Enochian system. Um, so I want to touch a little bit on this because all of these things are going to kind of tie in to um, what we're going to talk about when we get into the uh, reformed Great Table of Raphael. So this is the Great Table. I apologize that it's a little bit fuzzy here. Um, but this is what most people think of when they think Enochian is this grid of letters. Um, if you don't know what you're looking at, it's largely just letters. Um, like I mentioned before, John D was a cryptographer and things like this were his bread and butter. He made codes and ciphers all the time. So um, when the angels were communicating with him, they chose basically to encode this information in a way that um, kind of spoke to how he saw the universe and interacted with the world daily. Um, so the Golden Dawn added a lot of things later, um, like elemental attributions to each of these quarters. Um, so each of these represents one of the four castles or watchtowers in the vision of um, the, the I was just talking about. Um, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. But each of these quarters represents one of the castles. And so in each of these quarters is all of that information about the trumpeter, the ensign bearer, um, the king, the six seniors, et cetera. Um, and then the Golden Dawn added elemental attributions to each of these later um, that are based on the direction that they're in. Um, and yeah, and, and it just makes, you know, it, it makes sense within this Golden Dawn system. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense within the Enochian system too. Um, so you'll see within each quarter, if we just look at this upper left hand, uh, it's not truly a square, but um, we'll call it a square, um, that there are smaller, you know, it's divided again into smaller quarters. Um, each of these quarters is again given an elemental attribution as well. So this overall section in the upper left is the air quarter of the great table. And then within it is air of air, water of air, earth of air, and fire of air. So air is in the upper left, uh, water in the upper right, earth in the lower left, and fire in the lower right. And then that corresponds again to the overall table and each one of these as well. So this is the air, or I'm sorry, this is the water uh, quarter in the upper right. And we have air of water, water of water, earth of water, and fire of water. Um, so each of these includes a bunch of names of God, angelic names, words of summoning and command. I'm gonna break down where you can find each of the words, each of the names and everything as we go on. 
Um, but before we do, I want to talk about the Enochian calls, because these are the invocations that are used um, in turn in order to contact the angels of the Enochian system. So there are 19 calls in total. Um, there's people who say uh, 48 calls, but the, the 19th call was basically calls 19 through 48. Um, with just one word changed for each call. So the first call is used for operations with the Tablet of Union. I didn't make a, a slide for the Tablet of Union, so I'm just going to hold one up. Um, this is what a Tablet of Union looks like. Uh, it says H, comma, uh, XARP, H, comma, Nanta, and Bitome. And those are the um, words that appear in the central cross of the Great Tablet of Union. Um, so for the first call, uh, use it first for operations with the Tablet of Union, um, but it is not to be used for the elemental tape, uh, table operations. Um, I'm not really going to be talking much about the operations with just the Tablet of Union, um, because there's just too much for it to get into. Um, The second call is for the angel um, EHNB. Um, yes, you are you are summoning the Enochian angels by calling, um, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of get into that a little further um, as we go through. But um, each each of these calls is for a specific um, invocation, and you use them in, in sequence. Um, depending on what you're trying to do. So the first one is just for operations of the Tablet of Union. Um, and then the second is the second call um, if you're going to be operating with the Tablet of Union, um, which you use to call this one specific angel, um, EHNB, which stands for XR, H, Coma, Nanta, and Bitome um, from the Tablet of Union. Then the third call, if you want to just call the angels of XARP. Um, so you do call one, two, and three in order to call XARP angels. Um, and then that's going to be one, two, and then four if you want to use H coma angels and so on and so forth. Um, however, if you're just trying to reach the angels on the great table of Raphael, you're going to start with, you're going to ignore calls one or two. You're going to start with call three, four, five, or six. Um, so you would use this call first for calling the angels from the air elemental table. You would use call four first for calling the angels from the water elemental table. Um, and you would use these by themselves to call the six seniors that I talked about from the angelic vision um, from the air elemental table or the water elemental table. Um, you would use call five for earth, call six for fire. Um, XARP is one of the uh, four names from the Tablet of Union. Um, H, Coma, Bitoma, and Nanta are the others. Um, each of them has specific angels underneath them, but they're not required in order to work with the elemental quarters of the great table. Uh, yeah, it's it's a different operation entirely, um, which is why I, I don't want to get into the the tablet of union in this class because that would require a whole other class by itself. <laughs> um, so I'm basically just going to focus on the elemental quarters. Um, so. In order to get to one of the elemental quarters, you're going to start with call three, four, five, or six. Um, so for three, four, five, or six, you know, you if you want an earth table, it's five. Fire table, you're starting with six. And then based on which quarter you're trying to reach on that elemental table, you're going to use an additional call. Um, if you're trying to reach air of air, for instance, you would just use the third call and you're done. If you're trying to reach um, earth of earth, you would use the fifth call and then you're done. But if you're trying to reach the fire 
subquarter of Earth, um, you would need to use an additional call. So like here uh, for call number seven, if you want to reach water of air, you would use call three and then call seven. If you're trying to reach earth of air, you would use call number three and then call number eight. Um, fire of air is call three, then call nine, and then so on and so forth. Um, you know, air of water, earth of water, fire of water. Um, I am going to have a list of all of the calls, what order they they need to be used in, and the actual text of the calls um, that I'll be posting a link to in the event after the fact. So if anyone needs to look at the calls or the order that they're in or anything like that, um, that will be a resource that I will have up for everyone uh, in a day or two. Um, and then the final 19th Enochian call has nothing to do with the elemental tables at all. Um, and it is in order to reach the Enochian Aethers, which are the 30 realms that surround um, that central, uh, the central watchtowers. Um, and it is the same call for all 30 Aethers. The only thing that changes is the third word in the call, which is changed to the name of the Aether you're trying to reach. So if you're trying to reach Tex, that third word is Tex. If you're trying to reach Lil, that third word is Lil, so on and so forth. Um, so this is the first call. Um, I only have the text for the first call in the class. I am not going to read it in the Enochian. Um, it was delivered backwards to uh, Dean Edward Kelly um, because it is said to be too powerful to you know, to say normally, unless you're using it in an operation. Um, a lot of these words are obviously unfamiliar. They're not really in any language. It's meant to be a phonetic representation of Enochian. Um, if you're trying to use it, my understanding from most people is that it doesn't really matter how you pronounce it as long as you're doing your best to pronounce it accurately. Um, just try and go phonetically. If a couple things get mispronounced, it largely is not going to matter. It's going to work anyway. Um, here it is in English, and I will say it in English. Um, if you want, you can do the operation entirely in English. It's not necessarily required to do an Enochian. Most people find it more effective when it is done in Enochian, though. Um, so the first call is, I reign over you, saith the God of justice, in power exalted above the firmaments of wrath, in whose hands the sun is as a sword, and the moon is as a thrusting fire, which measureth your garments in the midst of my vestures, and trust you together as the palms of my hands, whose seats I garnished with the fire of gathering, and which beautified your garments with admiration to whom I made a law to govern the holy ones and which delivered you a rod with the ark of knowledge. Moreover, you lifted up your voices and swear obedience and faith to him that liveth and triumpheth, whose beginning is not, nor end cannot be, which shineth in the midst of your palace and amongst you is the balance of, ri of righteousness and truth. Move therefore and show yourselves, open the mysteries of your creation, be friendly unto me, for I am the servant of the same your God, the true worshiper of the highest. Um, each of the calls is a little bit different, but that kind of gives you an idea for the gist of them. Um, they're all more or less in that vein. Um, some of them are calling, you know, more specific things than that one. That one's a little more broad, but um, you kind of get the idea from the text there. Um, so this is just a list of the Aethers. I'm not going to go into them in depth. Um, they start at the outermost at Lil, the innermost is text, and they move um, in order. Um, each of the Aethers is ruled by three governors, except for text, which is ruled by four. Um, those governors are encoded within the Great Table of Raphael as well. Um, and then there's a bunch of other angelic entities you can meet and explore in those Aethers. If you do choose to do Aetheric workings through Enochian, I strongly recommend that you do not read firsthand accounts of other people's experiences in the Aethers before you try them yourself. 
Um, so the first time you go to ZOM, I would recommend not reading anyone else's experiences of ZOM beforehand. Um, try it yourself, see what experiences you have, write them down, then go back and look at other people's experiences. Um, looking over the literature first, I mean, there, there is some value to it and there's a lot of people who recommend it, but I feel like it kind of um, taints your own experience and gives you a false expectation of what you should see, um, which kind of pushes you away from the genuineness of your own experience. Um, my personal opinion is it's a lot more valuable to have your own experience, then go back and compare it to others uh, later. Um, yeah, I, it includes anywhere that um, that the visions are are written out. Um, if you've already read them, you've already read them. Um, you know, you can't underread what you've read. So, um, but if you're starting out with this for the first time, you know, I, I would recommend um, having your own experiences first, and then going back and looking at you know some of the things that other people have seen. Um, and then comparing comparing after the fact instead of before. All right, so now we're gonna get into decoding the Great Table of Raphael. Um, so the ensign bearers that I talked about from the Watchtower vision, um, we are looking at the smaller uh, quadrant of air on the Great Table. Um, so we're not looking at the whole great table, we're just looking at one quadrant. Um, and the ensign bearers are on the horizontal line in the center of the tablet. So you can see Oro, Iba, Iosp are the ensign bearers for air. Um, it is the first three letters, the second four letters, and the final five letters that appear on that um, row that form the names of the ensign bearers. So I have them written out for each of the um, quarters here, air, water, earth, and fire. And these are necessary to be named in an, evoke, in an Enochian evocation um, in order to evoke any angels from that quadrant. Um, so if you're trying to reach any angel of air, you're going to need to say these these words. Um, they are the names of God that are associated with that particular watchtower or that particular um, Enochian realm. Um, so the six seniors and the king, um, these all radiate outward from the center. Um, they are associated with the planets, uh, the six planets and then the sun, the seventh is the king. Um, and they start at these two central letters. They all start at the two central letters here and they radiate outward from that central letter. Um, so which, which planet associates with, with which one um, is a little bit complicated. You can find a list of them online um, that will be in the resources that I will have available after the fact. So if you want a list of all of the seniors and all of the kings, um, I will have that up um, at some point in the coming days uh, for everyone to take a look at. Um, the king is a little bit different. The king starts at this letter right here, which is the letter left of the, the central two. And it goes around in a clockwise direction. It kind of orbits those two letters and then it ends on one or the other, um, depending on we skipped ahead. Um, depending on which aspect of the king you're trying to call up, there's one of mercy and then there's one of um, not mercy, uh, judgment. Um, so if you're trying to reach mercy, you end here on the A. If you're trying to reach judgment, you end here on the H. Um, the name is the same, the final letter is different. And that kind of, gives a flavor overall to what what you're going for with a particular operation. Um, they are the same individual either way. It's just a different aspect of that individual. 
Um, it's also important to note that the six seniors and the king are their own kind of separate thing. You're not using these if you're trying to call the lesser angels uh, from this quarter. Um, you still have to use the three ensign bearers either way, but these are not necessary if you're trying to reach a, a lesser angel. You can skip past these. Um, so if you're trying to reach these directly, you would use the three ensign bearers and then the name of the senior or the king that you are trying to reach. Um, if you are not trying to reach a senior or a king, you can skip right past it. So the cavalry crosses. Um, in each of these smaller quarters on the table, you can see these uh, cavalry crosses. Um, there's two names of God. One is vertical and one is horizontal. Uh, the vertical name is used to summon the angels of this particular quarter of the quarter. Um, and the horizontal name is to command those angels. Um, you do need to use both names in an Enochian operation. Um, some people get a little uh, weird whenever the word command is used um, in things like this. They're like, well, that kind of feels disrespectful or whatever to me in order to use a word of command on something that I'm calling up, but you, it is essential in this. Um, it's not, it's not rude. It's not uh, bad manners. Um, it is something that is expected during this operation. If you do not use it, you will not get good results. Um, so it is, it is something that you should be utilizing. Um, each of the four quarters here has its own cavalry cross. So if you're trying to reach air of air, this is the cross you would use. If you're trying to reach water of air, you would be using this one, earth of air and fire of air. The dispositors, um, these are the lowest angels in the Enochian system and the ones you are more often than not trying to reach. Um, so these angels reside beneath the arms of the cavalry cross. So this is kind of a zoomed in on the air of air um, little bit right here. So basically in order to get to these, you're doing the third call, the third Enochian call, which is the air call. That's the only call you need to do um, because you're going to air of air. If you're trying to go to something like water of air, you'd need to do the third call followed by the seventh call. Um, but since we're just going to air of air, you just do the one. Then you're using the three, the names of the three ensign bearers. Then you're using the vertical name and the horizontal name. And then you can call up the particular angel that you want by its name. Um, these angels are the same whether you include the central letter or not. Um, it really doesn't make a difference. So it's going to be your personal preference. And also it can add to... Uh, how easy it is to pronounce the name. Um, you can pronounce each consonant just as itself um, without trying to add in extra sounds, or you can try and make the whole thing into uh, a name that sounds uh, good, that kind of rolls off the tongue. Um, that's up to your personal preference, basically on whatever is gonna be easier to pronounce, but uh, some of them are gonna be a little bit tricky depending on where on the table you're going. There are strings of consonants with no vowels um, and there are strings of vowels with no consonants. So um, just keep that in mind. These are also considered good angels. There are bad angels, quote unquote, in the Enochian system. I'm not gonna really talk about them today because um, that gets really, really complicated. Um, and then there are carobs also, which I, again, said I wasn't going to talk about. But if you are interested in the carobs, the, the names of the carobs are found above the cavalry cross. Um, there are four names for each carob on each cross. Um, and it basically just starts with each different letter. So this would be Z-L-A-R, L-A-R-Z, A-R-Z-L, and R-Z-L-A. Um, are the four different names for the four carobs on this particular um, cross. Um, 
these angels are also, they're elemental. Um, they're very elemental. So air of air is a very airy thing. Um, so for those of you who have studied uh, kind of Western hermetic uh, stuff, you'll kind of understand the um, elemental attributions that I'm talking about. Um, you can find them in like the Thoth tarot deck um, in the, the suits, um, like the uh, princess of wands or the, the king of cups or the, the queen of cups, um, for instance, like queen of cups is water of water. Um, and princess of fire is fire of fire. I think if I'm remembering that right. Um, so, you know, they, they each represent a, a thing. So that kind of gives you an idea for what to expect when you're going to call up uh, a water of water angel versus a water of fire angel. Princess of the earth, yeah. Um, sorry, my bad. Um, so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind, just to give you kind of an idea of what you're going to experience um, and also to inform where you want to kind of go um, on the table in order to reach an angel that uh, is appropriate for what you're looking for. Um, preparation for an Anoki and working. So before you start anything, um, you want to do your preliminaries. So ritual bath, whatever form your ritual bath uh, may take, there is, you know, recommended Enochian stuff um, in the diaries. My personal opinion is as long as you feel clean and purified afterward, that is what is going to be most important. Um, I don't think the angels are necessarily looking for anything in particular from you, other than you are clean and showing respect by um, making sure you are free from any kind of negative energy or uh, anything clinging to you that you are bringing into your temple space. Um, your general purification rituals, banishing, smudging, et cetera, whatever form they normally take um, is typically going to be fine, LBRP, et cetera. Um, make sure your temple space is clean. Um, you don't want cobwebs in the corner. Um, the angels are fairly big on cleanliness. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, typically it is good to fast or at a minimum abstain from meat for at least 24 hours prior uh, to the working. This is not something specifically laid out in the system. Um, it is just something that I have found to be more effective. Um, your mileage may vary with this, but I have found that fasting or abstaining from meat prior to these sorts of operations uh, is very beneficial um, in terms of the reception you get and the results you get. Um, actually doing a working. So you start with your preliminary banishings. You're going to recite the appropriate calls for whichever aether or angel you are trying to reach. Um, so for air of air, like I said before, you're going to be doing call number three. Um, you're going to recite an, an appropriate invocation for said angel. Um, invocations must include the names of the ensign bearers and the names of the cavalry cross if you're trying to reach a dispositor. Um, there are examples of appropriate invocations in Libervel Shanoch, 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 however you pronounce that, um, which was written by Alistair Crowley and includes his notes on the Enochian system. Um, Lon Milo Duquette also gives simpler invocations in his book, Enochian Vision Magic. So you can use the invocations from either. The invocations in um, Libervel Shanoch are the Golden Dawn evocations. Lon Milo Duquette uses simpler evocations that basically just focus on the names of the ensign bearers, the names of the cavalry cross, um, etc. Just the names within the Enochian system. Um, if you are scrying, you need to make sure you have a scrying glass or a crystal or something where um, the vision is meant to appear. Um, and ensure you have some method of communicating with the angels. Um, this can take a lot of different forms. Um, if you are experienced with any kind of evocation work or invocation work, um, you may find that things speak best to you mentally. You may find that you need some sort of tool like a pendulum. Um, I personally prefer to use the Thoth tarot deck. Um, I found that 
you can get some very interesting communication from a Thoth tarot deck and it lends itself very well to being recorded afterward. So you can kind of compare um, the answers you're getting to your questions with, you know, whatever either happens or uh, later experiments down the road. Um, it leads us, it, it's very easy to record what's happening and to go back and reference it later with the Thoth tarot deck. With a pendulum, maybe not so much. Um, if you're trying to use something like pyromancy, where you're reading the results and like a, the flickering of a candle flame, that not so much. Um, there's a whole bunch of other methods. You know, basically whatever's going to work best for you um, is probably the way to go. Um, and once you are done with the operation, you're going to be using an appropriate dismissal. Um, again, you can find Golden Dawn dismissals in Liberville Shanak. Um, there are also there is also a dismissal in Lon Milo Duquette's book, and there are plenty of other ones uh, floating around in the world of the internet if you are disposed to dig through and find them. Um, invocations, calls, and other resources. Um, so like I said, I am going to be posting a link in the Facebook event um, for all of the calls in Enochian and English, um, as well as some other resources for uh, invocations, some of the names, um, et cetera, et cetera, basically to kind of give you one giant information dump um, where you can go and say, oh, okay, I want to call up so-and-so um, and just find what you need in order to do that. Um, there's just so much information um, with all of it that, you know, I, it doesn't really lend itself well to going through every little bit of information um, in a class like this. Um, you know, I kind of just wanted to give you the tools to find what you need in order to um, use the system, in order to find the information that you needed in order to uh, to use the system. So additional reading, um, Liber Vel Shanak, uh, Alistair Crowley, um, obviously because he worked the system, he scried all 30 aethers, he worked with these angels extensively. Um, so it is Alistair Crowley. There's a lot of diagrams. Um, there's a lot of shorthand. There's a lot of things you're expected to know when reading this. Um, if you don't know, he doesn't stop to explain it for you. Um, so if you're, look, if you're using it just as a reference where you're looking up a particular Enochian call or a particular invocation, that's great. If you're using it as a primer to understand how Enochian functions, it's not going to function so well for you. Um, Enochian Vision Magic, Juan Milo Duquette. Um, Liber, yeah, Liber 84, Vel Shanak. Um, uh, Enochian Vision Magic by Lon Milo Duquette, uh, much more friendly for the beginner, and he gives instructions on how to build um, an Enochian temple space with your own tools. Uh, fairly useful for, you know, getting set up by yourself. Um, and building some of the tools if you don't already have them. Um, John D's Five Books of Mystery. Um, this is a transcription of the John D and Edward Kelly diaries. It doesn't really go into how to use the system or anything else. This is the information that we have that has survived from John D and Edward Kelly. Um, in my opinion, this is the best version of these diaries. Joseph Peterson is very good at um, editing and transcribing and translating uh, very old occult documents. He has a very good reputation for that. And I personally recommend this version over the other ones. Um, all of these books are available in the Thalesis Library. Um, so if you have the opportunity to visit Thalesis Oasis and you want to look at one of these books, they are there. Um, or they are unless someone has checked one out. Uh, some resources for tools and a shameless self-plug. So Goetic Impressions has most of the Enochian tools for sale. Um, like this is our Sigillum Day Ameth that we have available. Um, so we spent a good bit of time earlier this year putting these together, uh, building them as accurately as possible and putting them up for sale. So if you are looking for them, we do have them. Um, you can craft things yourself. Lon Milo Duquette's book, like I said, gives instructions for making most of these tools. Um, 
relatively inexpensively. They're not going to be super fancy, but you know, they'll be functional at least. Um, if you want a high quality tool that fits exactly the specifications in the diary, you know, made of gold or the particular type of wood, et cetera, there are some custom artisans out there who will make them. Um, it is extremely expensive. So I don't really recommend going that route. Um, but if you have the money and you really, really want the actual solid gold doohickey that is recommended, then you know there are places you can get that done. Um, there's specialty online stores that will sell things um, like Goetic Impressions, but there's some other ones as well. Um, you can shop around, find what you're looking for. Um, it's not going to be exactly 100% what the diaries are saying. Um, like I said, for that, you're going to need a custom artisan um, for the solid gold or the particular type of wood inlaid with the particular metal with the other particular type of wood laid over that um, or etc but you will find very close um, reproductions and that is that so if there's any questions or if you want me to go back over anything maybe that you didn't understand I would be happy to go a little bit more in detail with anything uh, does anyone have any questions Nope, oh, no questions. I think you may have answered all of them. <laughs> Maybe. I don't I don't think so. There's a lot of things that I didn't cover. <laughs> yeah, there is going to be a quiz on this later. So just ma make sure you took notes. <laughs> um all right. So I guess that'll wrap it up then. If uh yeah. Uh, can I go over the calls again? Yes, I can go. Let me flip back to the calls really quick. All right, yeah, and then there, there is a lot of information here. Um, it can be very confusing if you're trying to learn this on your own um, or from a book or anything to even know what the information is um, that you're looking at because a lot of it is, like I said, coded double blinds. Um, that were given to John D and Edward Kelly and it, your brain can explode trying to make sense of some of the stuff that the, is written in the diaries. But the Enochian call, so the first call is just for operations with the Tablet of Union. And the second call is to further call uh, all four, basically the one governing angel of the entire Tablet of Union, which is EHNV. Um, so the first two calls, if you're working with the Tablet of Union, you use them. If you're not, you can kind of skip past. Um, and then calls three, four, five, and six, you can use to call a particular angel or subset of angels from the Tablet of Union. Or you can use calls three, four, five, and six to call the six seniors or the king from their particular um, elemental quarter of the great table um, or you can use calls three four five and six um, as the first call for angels in general from that elemental quarter um, and then you would follow calls three four five or six if you are trying to reach angels of a particular quarter with the sub quarter call um, so if you want to reach air of air you can just use call number three because that's your error. But if you're trying to reach water of air, you would use call three and then call seven, which calls the water subquadrant of the air watch tower tablet. Um, this is not the emerald tablet. This is the reformed great tablet of Raphael. Um, is Enochian magic considered dangerous? It It is considered less dangerous than Goetic magic in general. Um, I would say that no type of magic is considered safe, if that makes sense. Um, there are risks inherent to working with any of them, 
what risks those are is determined by um, how good you are at practicing it, um, what your experience is, and how exactly you go about it. Um, I have done workings in a group setting. I have not done a Nokian in a group setting, though. Um, um, there, there is not specific guidance in as to which of the air of air angels uh, to work with. Um, there are people who have tried to categorize them. There is not like a, uh, there doesn't exist like a glossary of them the same way that you would find of say the, the goetic uh, spirits where it says the spirit does this, the spirit does that. Um, it's more of a, you're gonna kind of have to do it yourself and see what works best. Um, there are some people who have attempted to do it. I am, I would say with mixed results um, and also contradictory results. So I don't know how much uh, necessarily I would trust their catalogs. Um, Annalise had a question, but I don't see it. I was going to ask it out loud since I'm not mm -hmm. sure in the recordings if the question appears or not. Okay. So that's why I was just going to state it out loud was the blinds and the double blinds. Mm -hmm. How can you be sure what is a blind? What is a double blind? Is it just from doing it and seeing if there is a result or not? And is there any sort of consensus as to what those blinds and double blinds are? Okay, well, the, the most famous example is going to be on the Great Table itself. Um, so I've been using the uh, revised Great Table of Raphael um, for the purposes of this. This is the table that the Golden Dawn uses. This is the, uh, the last table that John D and Edward Kelly received in their visions. Um, there were two versions of this table that they received prior to this. Um, when Raphael gave them the revised table, he said both those ones were wrong. Um, so that's, they received the first one, then they received the second one and were told the first one was wrong. Then they received the third one and was told the second and the first one were wrong. So that's an example of um, some of the blinds. Um, the differences are minor. There's a few letters that are changed here and there. The main difference in the great table of Raphael is that um, all of these quarters changed positions. They were not in these positions originally. They were all moved around, um, which matters a lot when you consider the way the elemental attributions are tied to everything. So it was basically all out of order before this. Um, there's a lot of other things that they received. Um, specific names for things that they were then told later, oh, that's not the name that, you know, that was a fake name that we gave you in order to protect this thing. This is the real name. Um, most of those things are just tied into their angelic experiments in general and not specifically Enochian, um, but things like this uh, with the great table that they were given multiple instructions for. And then, um, it, the instructions were changed and changed and changed. Um, another another example is the Enochian calls. The first five Enochian calls were given um, by the angels backwards um, because the angels said that the calls were too powerful to recite forwards, but then they kind of gave up on that and just gave everything forwards after that. Um, so there's, there's things like that all over uh, the system. And if you read the diaries, you'll kind of see it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of kind of it in a nutshell. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Um, angels are beings of great power, rather literal beings. So being clear and in harmony carries a good likelihood the results may be uncomfortable. And yes, um, yeah. So like uh, so like uh, Michael says here. Um, I, I believe this is in re response to. Um, if it's dangerous or not. Um, but like in my preparation, I recommend fasting and uh, being clean and everything beforehand before working. So um, an example of how it might be dangerous, for instance, is if you neglect all of this, you show up to your working uh, 
dirty and in poor health and everything. Um, you have ice cream on your face still from the meal you just ate. There, you know, there's trash all over your ritual uh, space. Um, you, I mean, at best, probably it just doesn't work. But at worst, um, you actually contact an angel. You reach an angel and from their perspective, you're being very disrespectful in how you're treating the ritual. Um, and, you know, having an angel in general unhappy with you is probably not ideal. Um, so, yeah, so that's an example of how that could, uh, that could go. What is Enoki magic used for? Um, it is not directly tied into obtaining things you want. Um, Enoki magic is le like, Goetic is usually um, the form of magic you're going to look for if I want X, you know, I want, I don't know, $1,000. Um, so Goetic magic is very good at, I want $1,000, I'm going to get $1,000. Um, Enochian magic is more used for self-development, um, attuning yourself with a particular aspect of reality, which are the aethers, um, or you can having um, angels that you can contact that just know things is incredibly helpful. So as opposed to a uh, goetic magic where you might say, I want $1,000, uh, you could call up an angel that has to do with uh, earth, for instance, um, which are possessions and everything like that, and uh, ask them, how can I get $1,000? Um, what is the easiest way for me to manifest $1,000? And you'll probably get some pretty straightforward answers. Um, you may not necessarily like all the answers you're getting, depending on the questions you're asking. Um, but, you know, you'll probably be able to get results that way through Enochian. And that's typically how it's used. Um, and what goes into your choice of entities to contact? Um, well, the, the entities in particular, um, there's a couple different things. Like you can use, if you're looking to contact the seniors or the king of a particular thing. Um, the seniors are all associated with planets. So if you are looking to find a, um, let's say a, a love thing, for instance, you could go to the fire uh, quarter and call up the senior associated with Venus um, for passionate, fiery uh, love and attraction. Um, So, you know, that might be an example of uh, a way to know, you know, something like that, or just the elemental um, attributions of you want an angel who was a deep thinker. Um, so maybe uh, an earth of air angel, um, someone who's ponderous and slow to think, but also um, witty and deeply intelligent. Um, Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to throw out some examples. Um, you might want Earth and Venus instead um, or something like that um, based on what you're looking for. Um, you don't necessarily need a specific question. Um, it's good to have, if you're going to make Enochian a regular part of your practice, you typically want a slate of questions that you are always going to ask, um, followed by questions that you want for that particular operation. Um, you know, things like uh, you call up an angel, um, what is your name? Obviously, it's good to start with what is your name because you want to make sure that you've reached the thing you're trying to reach and not something else. Um, and then followed by uh, what is it you do? What are you good for? Um, you know, what are your particular areas of expertise? What can you help with? Things like that, um, which, you know, at the very least tells you whether or not you're going to want to call them up again, or if they're even going to be helpful for what you've called them for in the first place. Um, so, yeah, and then you might want to get into your specific, uh, you know, what the purpose of the specific operation is after that, um, you know, or you might develop uh, some more questions that you would normally want to ask. Um, I think Lon Myler Duquette has like 12 or 15 questions in his, uh, in his book um, that he always asks whenever he starts an operation. Um, I'm a little bit simpler. Um, I'm more interested in the results aspect. So I tend to focus on are, are you who you need to be and uh, what do you do? <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, uh, Enochian is typically very good for um, ascension related things. Uh, I think I mentioned that toward the beginning. Um, it can be very useful for balancing yourself um, in terms of what energies are present in yourself and in your life um, and helpful for connecting with higher things. Um, the way that the Enochian Aethers are situated with starting at the um, outermost and moving toward the center of the universe um, in several ways mirrors the um, moving to closer toward your holy guardian angel as you move through those aethers. Um, Crowley had a lot of things to say about that as well in various places. So um, if you are interested in what he had to say about things, that information is out there if you want to go looking for it. Um, so yeah, I, th I think I got all the questions. If I missed any question, uh, that anyone had in there, please just post it again because there's a fair bit of chat. All right, and like I said, I'm gonna have a video up after the fact. Um, probably don't expect it up today. Um, it'll probably be up tomorrow at the earliest and a day or two after that, I would, should have links up to all of the Enochian calls, um, some invocations, um, additional resources, et cetera, et cetera, for anyone who wants to actually break down and go through and find those resources for whatever they want to um, do. So yeah, I'm going to wrap that up then. And love is the law, love under will. And that's the class. All right, so we can just hang out and chit chat or uh,